Well, pretty much across Australia, we have nearly wall-to-wall liberal abortion laws, some of the worst in the world, that allow for pretty much abortion on demand right up until birth. One of the bastions that's yet to fall is Western Australia, and I'm sad to inform you that there are currently laws before the State Parliament of Western Australia uh, that will sink that state into the abyss of the culture of death that the rest of the nation has already sunk into. Today, we're going to be talking about those laws being proposed by the Western Australia Labor government. We're going to be talking about, sadly, the weak and woke response by the Western Australia Liberal Party. We're going to be talking about the impact on freedom of conscience. We're going to be talking about the federal Babies Born Alive bill. Um, We're also going to be talking about what you can do to end abortion and save lives in Australia today. This is The Church and State Show, and I'm George Christensen. May all that you stand for, and that we stand for, be preserved under the providence of God for the happiness of mankind. The trouble is caused by unthinking people who carelessly throw away ageless ideals as if they were old and outworn machines. But it is the values of individual liberty, equality before the law, and the supremacy of people over the state to which we can always with confidence return as a powerful and uniting force. Australia is not a secular country. It is a free country. The unmissable conservative conference that started in America in 1974 is coming to Sydney on August 19 and 20. Don't miss CPAC Australia. I'll tell you who is talking and how to get a 10% discount on tickets at the end of this show. That's CPAC Australia on August 19 and 20. Save the date and let's get back to the show. Well, g'day. As I said, I'm George Christensen, filling in for regular host of the Church and State Show, Dave Pello. Dave is quite busy at the moment prepping for uh, the Church and State's Big Ideas event, which is happening in Brisbane this Friday, the 11th of August. Uh, That event is featuring the fantastic uh, Senator for Queensland, Malcolm Roberts, who's going to be in a discussion with Dave before a live studio audience on who or what is God. That'll be a fantastic event to be at. So if you are in Brisbane or you can get to Brisbane this Friday, the 11th of August, please go to churchandstate.com.au for how you can go to that event. Well, as mentioned earlier, in Western Australia, the state parliament there is currently debating the Abortion Legislation Reform Bill 2023. This bill basically continues the sad tradition that we've seen across many other states in the rest of Australia of liberalising abortion. So we get to the point where we've pretty much got abortion on demand for any cause right up until birth. Uh, Straight up, that law, that proposed law, is increasing the time period where you can have abortions without restrictions from 20 weeks to 23 weeks. That's right, 23 weeks. That is well and truly past the point of the viability for a child in the womb. In fact, we know that 21 weeks, we've actually had successful premature birth, certainly from 22 weeks, uh, that's fairly common. 23 weeks, definitely common. You know what a baby in the womb at 23 weeks looks like? It's about 540 grams. It's about 20 centimeters in length. It has hair on its head and even the colour of its eyebrows are visible. That is what the Western Australia Labor government considers fine, fine and dandy to terminate in the womb. That is disgraceful. That is utterly disgraceful. But, you know, if you're someone who perhaps thinks that 23 weeks or 20 weeks is fine and beyond that, You know, it's good that the government's restricting those abortions. Well, I've got to tell you, you're in for a rude shock because, you see, abortion is already partly governed by one of the health acts in Western Australia. In Section 334, subsection 3B of the Health Act says that abortion is justified if the woman concerned will suffer serious personal, family or social consequences if the abortion is not performed. So while there is a little bit of paperwork, perhaps a little bit of bureaucracy to get through, 
If a mother simply presents to the appointed government panel and she's beyond 23 weeks, she will just tell them that, you know, she has serious personal consequences if this uh, birth is carried. She might have serious family consequences if this birth is carried. She might have serious social consequences if the birth is carried. And then you will have a number of people who are going to be extremely sympathetic to that position. They will just rubber stamp it. In fact, uh, the Church and State show is told by uh, people in the know in the West Australia Parliament that actually the panel that the government has set up to look at abortions that are post currently 20 weeks, and it will be after this legislation is passed, post 23 weeks, that that panel rarely even meets, and yet these abortions go on. So we certainly have a situation where Western Australia is pretty much uh, legislating for abortion on demand right up until birth. Uh, I could tell you that uh, the laws are even worse than that because they affect freedom of conscience. Uh, but I first want to go to the response from the Western Australia Liberal Party. I mean, it's like they don't learn. Seriously, they don't learn. Libby Madam is the opposition leader, the Liberal Party leader in Western Australia. And she has actually come out and said uh, she supported these laws. And in fact, she's vigorously supported one aspect of it. And that is uh, the, the doing away with a parental consent to actually have an abortion performed on a child under the age of 16 years. She said that it's a tragedy, that's her words, a tragedy that uh, 16 year olds or younger actually need parental consent to have an abortion. Well, what's a tragedy is that parents are going to be stripped of their rights in dealing with the health choices of their children. That's a tragedy, uh, Madam Metam. That is what is a tragedy. What's a tragedy, Madam Metam, is that perhaps uh, doing away with parental rights could actually cover up the crimes of pedophiles that take advantage of girls who are 16 years or younger by simply erasing the product of their crime. That is a tragedy, Madam Metam. Uh, and you know, you just wonder, when are the Liberals going to learn? In WA, of all places, uh, where they went completely woke at the last election, they've come up with a woke and weak response to these anti-life laws. I mean, do they really want to sink any further? Right now, uh, the WA Liberal Party couldn't even field a cricket team. They're two people short. Uh, right now, the WA Liberal Party uh, would fit in a combi van. The entire parliamentary wing of the WA Liberal Party would fit in a combi van. And I've got to tell you, with such uh, woke responses, with such uh, lefty responses like this to this uh, Labor proposed abortion legislation reform bill, a combi van's probably where they belong. The first paragraph of our nation's constitution says, whereas the people of New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, Queensland and Tasmania, humbly relying on the blessing of almighty God, have agreed to unite very, very important first, con first paragraph. On Friday evening, the 11th of August, Dave Pello and I are going to have a chat in front of a live audience. It's just going to be a friendly chat. Now, why am I sitting down with Dave Pello? Well, Dave Pello and George Christensen are highly intelligent people who are very con conversant with concepts of Christianity. And they both stimulate me and I learn from that. And I love being stretched. I love feeling uncomfortable at times because it means I'm going to a new spot in my learning. Now, the topic of God has long interested me, but I've never really sat down and put a lot of effort into thinking about it. So I've, I've explored it in many, many ways, but I'd like to really uh, learn from Dave, and Dave stretched me a bit. So if you're interested, come along. It was my topic, I suggested it to him, and the topic is who or what is God? The concept of God is fundamental to our society, fundamental to our communities. It's relevant to parliament and politics. It's relevant to everyone wanting to restore our nation and our values as a Christian nation. This is not about religion. It's about a core to our society. Now, many people, like I do, have questions on this topic and how it relates to our life. So I look forward to you joining us for the evening and to your questions. 
Beyond the wokeism of the Liberal Party, one of the disturbing aspects of this WA proposed abortion law is the impact that it has on religious liberty and freedom of conscience. And this has been the case in many other states around Australia as well. What's happened is, is the laws have actually taken away the rights of medical professionals to just extricate themselves from these horrific procedures, these procedures that they consider intrinsically evil. If you're a doctor uh, or any other medical practitioner and someone comes to you seeking an abortion, you can't simply say, hey, look, I don't support abortion. It's against my conscience, it's against my ethical beliefs, or it's against my faith, uh, you need to go elsewhere. Uh, instead of that approach, the government is actually requiring these doctors to be part of the process by referring them, formally referring them onto other doctors that will perform the procedure. Now, some people might not think that's a big thing, but I've got to tell you, being part of a procedure that you think is actually murder, uh, that is a big thing. It's such a big thing that in some churches, that would actually mean excommunication. That's how big it is. You know, uh, and to force people of faith to actually make that choice, it's akin to the whole no jab, no job routine. Really, it is. Uh, if you don't comply with the state's unethical law, you will be de-jobbed. You will be deprofessionaled. You will lose your career as a doctor or as a health professional. This is just a sad state of affairs, and uh, it follows on from laws that are already in place in WA. They're already in place in uh, most states in Australia and actually right around the West, Western world, where we have these abortion clinics treated now like they are sacred places. You know, these safe zones that have been legislated so that people can't hand out literature uh, within like 150 metres or 200 metres sometimes of these clinics. You can't hand out literature, you can't protest, uh, it's exercising your right to political communication, your right to free speech. Uh, you can't stand there silently praying outside an abortion clinic. Uh, people have been arrested in this country for doing that. In fact, right now in the United Kingdom, uh, there is a, a veteran, a veteran of the Afghanistan war. His name is Adam Smith Connor. Adam Smith Connor stood outside uh, an abortion clinic, his head bowed, silently praying. Not disturbing anyone, silently praying. He was praying for his deceased son, and he was probably praying for other children that are uh, terminated as a result of abortion. And for that, he's been arrested. For that, he faces a courtroom. For that, he probably faces uh, either big fines or quite possibly jail. That uh, is just intolerable in a free society uh, that uh, these places are given such a sacrosanct nature by the government. It just shows how inverted things have become, how ethics have been turned on its head, uh, where free speech is out the window, the right to actually say to someone that, hey, you should choose life. That is no longer considered acceptable. And instead, we need to protect these abortion clinics that profit from death above all else. It is just so, so wrong. So the fact that WA is now going to join the rest of the country in liberalised abortion, unless, of course, we're able to stop it, uh, you know, it very much speaks to the need for federal laws protecting children who are born alive as a result of botched abortions. And currently, there is a law before the Australian Senate. Uh, it is being proposed by Senators Matthew Canavan, Senators Alex Antic, and Senator Ralph Babbitt. It's a law that actually, when I was a Member of Parliament, I brought before the Australian Parliament uh, the Human Rights Babies Born Alive Protection Bill. Uh, and that bill actually says that if a child is born alive outside of the womb as a result of an abortion procedure, that depending on the circumstances of that child, that is whether it's survivable or not, that the appropriate treatment should be given to that child. So the appropriate treatment could be palliative care if it's a child that can't survive uh, that forced birth 
or it could be life-saving treatment. Now, I would think that that is at least the humane thing to do. In fact, it's part of our international obligations as a signatory to the United Nations Convention on the Rights of a Child. Currently, we have the systemic approach in Australia, which is completely opposed to what we've signed up to with the Convention on the Rights of a Child. In fact, in Queensland, a state that I come from and that I'm very familiar with, the uh, guidelines, the Queensland Health Guidelines for the clinical termination of pregnancies, for abortions basically, states that in the event of a live birth, that no life-saving treatment is to be given. Just let the child die. And that is the approach that we see nearly right around Australia. So this sort of law becomes more and more imperative as we have another state like Western Australia staring down the barrel of falling into that abyss of the culture of death that I spoke about earlier. And, you know, there's a Senate inquiry going on right now, and that's pretty much thanks to the tenacity of those three senators and other supporters they have in the Senate, Senators Antic, uh, Senators Babbitt and Senator uh, uh, Canavan, you know, three great senators and warriors for life. But uh, this Senate inquiry that they've got up has just shown all the arguments against this proposal to be so, so weak. In fact, at best, you could say that the arguments against it are flimsy. At worst, they're duplicitous. Because at the same time as they say that, oh, there's no need for these laws, this idea that babies are born alive as a result of abortions is a myth. They also say out of the other corner of their mouths that if those laws are passed, they're going to be harmful to women and doctors. Well, which one is it? Is it a myth or is it going to be harmful to women and doctors? How is it going to be harmful to women and doctors? I mean, I know the laws. I actually drafted those laws. The laws say that women will not be prosecuted. And you know, the laws also say that doctors would only be prosecuted or fined in the event that they did not provide the appropriate treatment to the child, either palliative care or life-saving care if the child is viable. So how are the laws going to affect a doctor unless that doctor is doing what they should be doing, their duty of care to support life, to support life that quite frankly in that instance is outside of the womb. This is no longer an abortion argument. So those laws are incredibly important uh, incredibly, incredibly important, particularly as WA uh, sinks into that, that abyss of the culture of death. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have seen this picture before. For all of those in WA, I have seen this picture before. I saw it in Queensland, my home state. And when these laws were passed that liberalised abortion right up until birth, abortion on demand right up until birth, what we saw was this gaggle of Labor MPs in the Queensland Parliament and our Parliament of our state cheering, laughing, clapping and celebrating because they had passed laws that, like those in Western Australia, will see the deaths of thousands, if not tens of thousands, of babies in the womb every year, year in, year out. That's what they were laughing about. That's what they were celebrating. That's what they were cheering about and clapping on. These people, quite frankly, are evil. And their agenda has got to be stopped. And, you know, there's one group of people who can actually stop it. And it's not a political party. It's not a church denomination. It's not even an activist organisation. It's you. You have the power to stop it as a pro-life Australian. Because you see, it's time to get angry, people. It really is time to get angry and active. We've got at least, from the figures that we know of, 80,000 babies that are killed each year in Australia. 80,000 Australian lives terminated in the womb in Australia, year in, year out. Why, why do we consider that acceptable? If they were the offspring or, or eggs of native species in this country, uh, that were being destroyed, people would wind up with either big fines or they'd probably wind up in jail. Yet because they're unborn children, well, governments accept it, politicians accept it, the media accept it, accepts it, our laws accept it. It's considered fine. But it's not fine. It's the killing of an innocent human life and that 
my friends, is evil, regardless of whether that life is in the womb or outside of the womb. As I said, we need to get angry and we need to mobilise if we're going to end abortion in this nation. Indeed, we should be angry because it's our tax dollars via Medicare and public health funding that pay for the costs of many abortions, something that we consider an intrinsically evil act. Just think about that for a moment. You're paying for an act you consider is evil with your hard-earned money, which you're forced to give to the government. Thomas Jefferson had a saying about that. He said to compel a man to subsidise with his taxes the propagation of ideas which he disbelieves and abhors is sinful and tyrannical. We have a sinful and tyrannical situation occurring in Australia right now. And while the abortion providers, the purveyors of death, while they're all publicly funded, charitable crisis pregnancy centres that put forward pro-life alternatives for expectant mothers, they're not. In fact, they were defunded by Australian governments in the past. Babies who are born alive as a result of abortions, as I've said, are also discarded. Uh, there's no national laws protecting them and ensuring that they've got appropriate life-saving health care, even though they're out of the womb. In many cases, those babies are just simply left to die. This entire culture of death that permeates our nation needs to be opposed. That's why you need to know what you can do to join the fight against abortion, the fight for life, the fight to end abortion in WA and indeed right across Australia. The first thing you can do is if you're a person of faith, if you're a Christian, is pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray to end the scourge of abortion in this country. There is nothing more important than prayer. The second thing that you can do is get behind those who are actually fighting for life. Uh, if you haven't contacted the officers of Senator Alex Antic, Senator Matt Canavan or Senator Ralph Babbitt and said thank you for putting forward this uh, Federal Born Alive uh, Act, then please go and do it. Pick up the phone or send an email. Tell them thanks because these are the warriors for life in Australian politics right now. They're few and far between. In WA, you can phone up and congratulate uh, WA Liberal Nick Goyron, who is one of the warriors for life over there and will be strenuously opposing uh, this proposal that's before the WA Parliament. And the final thing I want you to do is check out a couple of websites. The first is citizengo.org forward slash end abortion. Sign the statement for life there so that you can be part of the Citizen Go army in defending life, family and freedom in Australia. I'm currently acting as the National Campaigns Director for Citizen Go and so if you sign up to that form you'll hear more from me and our campaigns for life in the future. But Church and State has also set up a new platform at effectivism.com.au. If you sign up to that platform right now you can begin to take action on the WA abortion laws. But if you sign up uh, whether you are in WA or not you will get more information in the future about campaigns that are standing up for life and other Christian values. And what this is about is effective campaigns. It's about the mission of church and state, and that's arming Christians to take action in today's society. Uh, so whether you know how to do activism or not, whether you're uh, confident in contacting an MP to talk about your views on a particular proposed law, uh, this website, this platform, effectivism.com.au, will help you in that endeavour. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to get active. We've got to get mobilised. If we want to see a pushback, if we want to see an end to abortion in Australia, it's through effective activism that's going to get it done. Before I wrap up, I just want you to have a listen to uh, Madam Medham, Libby Medham, the Liberal leader in WA, and her response to these laws. And this just shows you how ineffective, actually, that we've all been. Because when the major conservative party is coming out with an anti-life position, we know that we really haven't been effective at all. Have a listen to Madam Medham on these abortion laws. Mandating the reporting of live births following an abortion to the coroner introduces an unnecessary intrusion into these lives, potentially compounding the emotional burden they already bear. 
It is our duty to ensure that the experiences of patients and their families are met with understanding and empathy rather than subjecting them to additional stresses that serve no tangible medical purpose. So these laws, supported by both Liberal and Labor alike, uh, they're in the WA Parliament right now, they're being debated. Uh, they're going to go before the upper house of the Western Australian Parliament uh, either next week or the week after. So we've got just a few weeks to take action to avoid completely wall-to-wall uh, liberal abortion laws that pretty much have abortion on demand right up until birth. Uh, this is your chance to take that effective action. I'd encourage you again, sign up to two websites, citizengo.org forward slash end abortion and effectivism.com.au. It's over to you now in the fight for life. This is the Church and States Show. I'm George Christensen. You can find more of me at Nation First dot substack dot com uh, god bless you your family and our nation over and out today we need a special kind of courage not the kind needed in battle but a kind which makes us stand up for everything that we know is right everything that is true and honest we need the kind of courage that can withstand the subtle corruption of the cynics so that we can show the world that we are not afraid of the future and now how to get your 10% discount on tickets to CPAC Australia 2023. The conference that has been unmissable for supporters of conservative and right-of-centre politics in the United States since 1974 is happening again in Sydney on August 19 and 20. The speakers include Senator Jacinta Price, Warren Mundine, Tony Abbott, Pauline Hanson, John Anderson, Matt Canavan, Moira Deeming and many more to get your 10% discount. Use the code ADHTV23 before July 31st. That's ADHTV23 at cpac.network forward slash register 2023.